Chapter 38, Roger to the Rescue. There was one issue on which everyone was stubborn, and it had to do with the legislative branch. The fight was between the big states and the little ones. No one would give in. The Virginia plan said that the number of congressmen each state would have should be decided by population. There is some sense in that, but of course, it favored the states with the most people, Virginia, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania. These states would have the most of the congressmen. The New Jersey plan was introduced by William Patterson. It said each state should have an equal number of representatives in Congress. That meant that Delaware, with 59,000 people, would have the same number of congressmen as Virginia, with almost 692,000 people. Was that fair? Neither side would budge. It seemed that a constitution would never get written. Some people talk of quitting, and, other, and others called another convention to try again. Then Roger Sherman came up with a compromise. Sherman was a tough, old Connecticut Yankee, a lean, sharp-nosed man with big hands and feet who wore plain, sensible clothes and spoke only plain, sensible words. George's delegate described Roger Sherman as the oddest-shaped character I ever remember to have met with. <clears throat> he is awkward and unaccountably strange in his manner, yet no man has a better heart nor a clearer head. Roger Sherman had signed the Declaration of Independence and the Articles of Confederation. At age 66, he was the second oldest man at the convention. As a young man, he had been a shoemaker and a farmer. Then he taught himself law and became a lawyer. John Adams called him an old Puritan, honest as an angel. Thomas Jefferson once pointed to him and said, There is Mr. Sherman of Connecticut, who never said a foolish thing in his life. In Connecticut, so the story goes, he was asked to give the dedication speech for a new bridge. He walked out onto the bridge, stood for a moment, came back, and turned to the crowd. It stands steady, he said. That was the speech. The Constitutional Convention needed a man of good sense and few words. Here is Roger Sherman's compromise. Actually, it is known as the Connecticut Compromise. One house of the legislature should, re should reflect a state's population, the House of Representatives. One house should have an equal number of representatives from each state, the Senate. It was, that was it. That simple solution meant that there would be a constitution. After that, it was just a matter of details. <laughs>